Hi. Um, today I'm going to do a very quick video for you. It's about something that I get asked many, many times. Um, and I try and explain it to people in the shop, but without actually being able to show you it being done, I think it's a little bit confusing for people. So what I'm going to do a video about is how you fit a tank connector into a concrete pond. Uh, this is something that you'd use if you want to do a return uh, in an existing pond, a pond that's already been built and you need to retrofit something like this into the wall. So it's going in below the water level so you can get water back into your pond uh, in a nice, clean, professional looking way. The things that you're going to need to do this are obviously a tank connector um, and a drill to cut the hole. This is a diamond tip core drill. Uh, if you haven't got one of these kind of things, most hire centers will be able to supply one for a very reasonable amount of money. And you need to make sure that it's going to be sufficient in size so that you can slot all of the tank connector into the wall when you finish. You're also going to need, do you want to just move in a little bit closer so I can show people? You're going to need some plugs and you're going to need a few um, self tapping screws. These are stainless steel self tapping screws. So when they go in, they don't rust. You'll need a small drill just to create a few holes for your plugs. A screwdriver to drive in the screws. Some aquarium silicon and a dispenser. A tiny bit of washing up liquid. That's just gonna be used uh, to finish off the silicon, to prevent the silicon from going all over the place when we actually apply it. And a grinder, uh, either with a sanding disc like this one or with a cutting disc. If you have a look at this tank connector here, when this is purchased, it already comes with some screws. Those screws, we're not going to need them. We're going to get rid of those screws and take them out straight away. We're also not likely to need this flange either. That's going to be just put to one side. You only use this flange if you're doing it and you're fitting a liner. You're fitting it onto a rubber liner. So this is the thing, the tank connector, that we've got to go into the wall. If you have a look, a close look at the back of this, you're going to notice that it's got these um, holes in here with the screw thread inside it. Now, they will prevent this from going into the wall flush. So when you do this, you're going to have to either cut these off with a saw or grind them down so that the thing finishes flush. I'll just quickly do that to show you what I mean. So I'm removing these um, bits out the back of the tank connector that would be protruding and preventing this from being pushed back into the wall. So as you can see there, I've removed all of that protrusion. Now this, when it goes into the hole, it can go all the way in and you're gonna be able to get it flush against the wall. 
The next thing that we would need to do is actually cut the hole in the wall using the um, the core drill. Um, now, on this pond here, we've decided that we need an extra return on the back wall, where we're going to bring some additional water in from our filter system. Basically, we're trying to increase the flow from the filters back into the pond. So we want a nice clean entry point straight through the side of the pond. We don't want to have to bring the water up and over the top of the pond because that would look messy. Right, so I've chosen the point where I'm going to create the hole. Um, and this is a sensible distance down below the water level. We wouldn't want this thing to be right down near the bottom, but if it's too close to the surface, when the pump's on, you might get a lot of disturbance. So I'm actually going about six inches down from the water level. I've just partially started this hole in the wall, and on this occasion, it's only a soft block that's behind it. But a tool like this is more than capable of getting through almost any kind of concrete or brickwork. Um, the only thing that you might struggle a little bit with is if it's got um, reinforcing in the wall. Now on this occasion there isn't any kind of um, steel or, or rebar or anything like that in the wall, so we're not going to have a problem getting through this. Whilst you're operating a drill like this, you'd normally have on goggles, uh, ear protectors, and you'd make sure um, that you are spraying some water onto the drill all the time. If you're drilling something that's hard and it's likely to make the drill get hot and perhaps damage um, the drill bit itself. On this occasion, I think we're going to get through quite easily uh, because this block work is quite soft. So we've cut the hole out, the next thing to do is to fit your tank connector into the wall. Now this pond is sealed with fiberglass and this method is probably only going to work if you've got a concrete pond that's been sealed with fiberglass. You might be able to make it work if you're using a rubber liner as well, but you definitely need something like concrete behind it if this method is going to work. We've removed those lugs off the back, so the tank connector fits in nice and snug. Just get a close-up of that for me as well, please. You can see that's going to go right back against the wall. We can't just stick some silicon on that and push it back on the wall though. It might hold for a few days, but the silicon's not strong enough as a glue to give us a seal and to hold it securely for years. So what we've got to do now is we've got to use those screws and those plugs to actually pull this back onto the wall nice and tight and hold it firm and secure for years. So we've just got a little cordless drill here that I'm going to use to get them plugs in. The tank connector's in place and you've already got four holes where the original screws would have gone. So if you just drill straight through there.
All the time I'm doing this, obviously I'm holding this firmly in place so that the position of these holes isn't moving around. I've got four clear marks now on the wall where the holes are going to need to be. Drill piece started off here, didn't it? So it looked like you're going like that. Sorry. You still filming? Yeah, yeah. You said film no matter what. Yeah, but don't interrupt. Just look it out. No, I don't know. Cameraman thinks he's the director as well. So we've got the holes drilled ready and the plugs just got to make sure all them plugs you don't want the plugs sticking out at all because the finish has got to be flush now this is normal aquarium silicon and I'm going round the back of this to form a gasket I'm going to be generous with this because we want this to squish out and block up any small gaps that there might be in the surface. You don't have to be neat with this stuff, it's not a job in town, we're just doing it to be functional. Screws are going to go in. I'm just going to push it back into the wall, and the plugs, the screws are going to line up with those plugs. And then we're just going to tighten them over. Got it nice and tight, you can feel it actually pulling that back nice and tight to the wall. You don't want to put too much pressure on it, but you don't want it to start stripping all the thread out from inside that uh, plug. But we do want to make sure it's really got it and that it's not going to go anywhere afterwards. If you've got a bit of washing up liquid available, and you use that on the end of your finger, when you smooth this stuff down, it's going to stay in place 
and it's not just going to be pulled off onto your finger all the time. Fitting them like this, retro fitting them, is probably not the best way of doing it. If you was building a pond from scratch, you can get these things into the wall uh, and you don't have to go through this procedure. But if you have got the situation where you want to put a return into a wall like this, you've already got the pond built, the fiberglass has already been done, then this is how I would suggest you go about doing it. Obviously the back of this is still available and when you're ready to connect up your pump, you go around the back, you insert a piece of pipe and that will pass through into here and you can glue it in place from the back. Thanks very much. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and leave some comments below. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.